Um, so I guess I'll just, I think you have lots of information already about climate change. Um, so I won't tell you about climate change, um, but uh, just for your amusement, this, this picture actually was made by a former colleague of mine, um, it, formerly an astrophysicist, um, who made this picture, which is now very famous, um, showing the temperature rise um, over the last uh, 150 years. Um, and I think this is not quite up to date. Um, it's a lot warmer um, in the last two years than, than is shown on this graph even. Um, so I will talk a little bit at the beginning about the importance of food in, in climate change, because um, I was very interested to see that your program is starting with food um, when you when you try to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions um, in your SAC team, you, you starting with food. And that's very unusual um, that people think immediately of cars, they think of heating, fossil fuels, but actually food is extremely important. Um, and then we'll spend time talking about the contribution of different foods to climate change. And then I will share with you some materials that you can download um, from the internet that are all free that you could use if you're interested. And some of those materials are aimed at children. So I was also interested to hear that you have a kids program in your plans for your work. Um, so maybe something there is useful to you, and that would be great. So I don't need to tell you about the importance of climate change, um, and I don't need to tell you about the importance of climate change for the food system. Um, and that was some, very interesting to hear your perspectives at the beginning about your concerns about, um, for example, the resilience of different products that we're growing to extreme weather. You know, if these apricot varieties are you know, maybe more resistant to drought perhaps, but are not the ones that we're growing at the moment. So I am actually really interested in the potential impact of climate change and other global events on food. But today I'm gonna to focus mostly on the impact of food on climate change. So actually food has become food is actually now about one third of all climate change. That number has changed a bit since I wrote the book, um, partly because the impact of food is increasing, but also more detailed studies um, looking more thoroughly at the food system. And some of this work is led by the um, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, that I'm sure you're very familiar with. And so this um, number includes clearing land for agriculture, um, growing crops to eat, to, for humans to eat, for animals to eat, um, the processing, packaging, transport, cooking, um, and waste of food as well. And you mentioned wasted food at the beginning. So this is all adds up into this number, um, which I showed you before. And we can look in much more detail at diagrams like this, if you're interested. But just this diagram really shows food in comparison with other things that we do that contribute <laughs> Excuse me, it's, uh, so I'm suddenly very sunny here and we have um, hay fever one week early this year. So that's me started. Um, so you can see how food compares with heating and um, transportation as well as the construction industry. And so actually it turns out that most of this non-food emissions are mostly fossil fuels, but actually the food emissions are mostly not fossil fuels. So that means that if we, even if we were to stop burning fossil fuels, food would still be contributing to climate change. And in fact, food alone is projected to cause two degrees of warming by the end of the century, if we keep going on the tra trajectory we're on at the moment with more people and the current diet. So we are going to have to address food um, in the context of climate change to, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So it's brilliant to hear that you're already looking at this. And also 
um, agriculture is relatively unique in that it actually has the potential to sequester carbon through the way that we're growing trees, for example, which increases the amount of carbon in the soil. So there's a lot that agriculture can do to help as well. And just I just want to put this into the perspective of other activities that we might do. So for example, if we drive a car 40 kilometers, then that causes this amount of climate change, but actually that's very similar to the amount of climate change caused by our diet in one day. So it's important to look at food and climate change, but it's also important to look at the amount that we're driving, for example. And if we were to take one flight, uh, one return transatlantic flight to the US and, and back to, uh, to Europe, for example, then we would then, if we shared that greenhouse gas emissions out across the days of the year, that would cause slightly more greenhouse gas emissions. So I guess if we're trying to reduce our own climate impact and we're flying a lot, which is something that I did um, in my job um, in astrophysics um, 10 years ago, for example, then that was actually a lot more important than my food greenhouse gas emissions. So it's just useful to, to put these things into perspective. And if we're looking ahead um, to halving greenhouse gas emissions, um, you mentioned some, some plans uh, for the UNDP that you're looking to halve greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, then we would need to have this amount of food greenhouse gas emissions. And I'm going to use this to compare with the greenhouse gas emissions of different food choices. So this would be the daily budget, the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions per person per day um, is given here. And I'll keep, I'll keep coming back to that. Are there any questions uh, at the moment? I'm just going to stop for a moment in case you have any questions. Am I going too fast or too slow? Can you let me know which one? <laughs> just type fast or slow no. into the chat. Sarah, it's it's uh, it's quite all right the the, the speed of, of the presentation and uh, for the for the Zoom uh, participants, I would say that uh, it's it's quite quite all right with us. And then we don't have uh, I don't have any any questions so far. So if, uh, if other colleagues they have any comments and they they are welcome to to share. Thank you. That's very helpful. That's fine. Yes, just checking. OK, so I'm going to ask you a question now. <laughs> so which do you think causes more climate change? Um, a eight ounce steak. Or a jacket potato and beans. I'll just type that into the question uh, into the chat. OK, I'm just testing that you can type into the chat, really. I know this is maybe a bit of an easy one to start with. <laughs> Excellent. Good warm up question. Excellent. Good. So I wonder how different do you think it is? So this is an eight ounce steak. How different? Eight ounce steak. Um, so, yes, any thoughts on that? Is it maybe just a little bit bigger or tw two times bigger or 100 times bigger or, yeah. Okay, we've got a few different ones. <laughs> maybe a thousand <laughs> times more no. carbon emission. <laughs> okay, we've got a few different ideas here. So one Lily is saying significantly. That's, that's that's helpful. We've got some numbers here um, from uh, from Hudakil. Uh, that's great. Probably twice. Um, Jamshid is saying beans. Got one point five <laughs> numbers in grams. Uh, Ten times. Great. So lots of different answers there, which is great. And actually, 
the best answer is that that it well I mean it depends there is there is not one answer so you're completely right to say there are lots of different answers effectively um but if we look at um, a European um, or um, North American production of steak then it would cause about 20 times in total um, compared to this beans and potato but it does also depend on how that potato is cooked um, as well. So there's lots of details that we could talk about. And maybe um, that's one of the questions that, that we need to ask, in fact, is, is to find out where that steak comes from, how that cow was raised, um, and how, that, um, how the potato was cooked. Okay, great, we're gonna move on. Oh yes, yeah, so this is an interesting piece of research which shows that people often will get the correct order so they might know that the state causes more greenhouse gas emissions than the beans, but they'll be very wrong in the, 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 the size of the difference. So people tend to underestimate the size of the differences between different, um, different causes of climate change. And that's why these graphs are quite flat um, rather than on the diagonal line. OK, so. Um, we do have a little bit of a clue about this because we talked about a latte earlier, um, but how different um, do you think these are? Well, just which do you think causes the most climate change, I guess? So um, do you think a bowl of cereal causes the most climate change? Or do you think the latte causes the most climate change? Or do you think it's the eggs? And do ask questions um, if you've got questions about some of these details. So I'm going to look at the chats now. I'm just gonna type it in. Uh, which do you think causes the most climate change? We've got a bowl of cereal, B, latte, C, eggs. Great, okay. So we've got one vote for eggs. And we've got one vote for latte. Two votes for cereal, three votes for cereal. Excellent, thank you for joining in with this. That's great. And do ask questions if you've got questions as well. Oh, not sure, maybe the latte, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, good. Shall I reveal the answers now? Um, so this is, this is showing you on the same scale as this, uh, this is our budget. For the, the whole day and this is our breakfast maybe and so we can see that the bowl of cereal in this calculation the bowl of cereal is lower than the latte and um, Ibrahim has pointed out the milk which is really the key thing here that it's really the quantity of milk that you use so I don't know how much milk you put on your cereal um, so um, this is for a 200 grams of milk on cereal. And this is for a large latte. Um, in a coffee shop, you might get a latte with 500 millilitres of milk. So that's a large amount of milk compared to the cereal. Um, have you got a question there? Um, I don't know how to say your name exactly, but I, I submit in. Uh, sorry, Sally, because that is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what about the type of the milk? For example, we have natural one which is so we get from uh, cattle, the another, let's say, more artificial, yeah? Yes. What is the difference? Yeah, so what do you, when you say um, different sorts, then you said about the cattle, the milk from the cattle, but are there, uh, which other ones are you looking at? I'm curious. So we can, we can talk about uh, milk from different animals. And we can also talk about plant-based milks. Do you have many plant-based milks? Like oat milk or almond milk, I guess, yeah. So we can talk about the, um, mm. go on. Uh, no, sorry, especially uh, we prefer the natural one from the coast and uh, maybe from just got milk like this, yeah. Got you, okay, yeah. So you could get the milk um, more directly. So you could get the unpasteurized milk directly from the farm um, and you can get milk which has been homogenized and processed, um, which is um, on the supermarket shelves um, in the plastic bottles. So it turns out that really cow and sheep 
and goat milks all cause at least twice as much greenhouse gas emissions as plant-based milks. And it's not a big difference whether the milk comes in plastic packaging, glass bottles, whether you get it directly from the, the, the cow or whether you get it in the supermarket, because it's really producing that milk. It's the cows that are burping methane um, and producing manure that that's driving the greenhouse gas emissions of that milk. So that's quite a large fraction of the greenhouse gas emissions from milk is from the cows. And then the extra from transport or packaging is, is usually quite a small part of that. So I've just stopped showing the slides briefly because I was thinking about your question, but I will share them again now. Um, thank you, that's great. Yeah, so that's a good question. So it's much more about the quantity of milk um, than it really is about exactly the details of, of how that came and whether it's plant-based or animal-based will be a factor of at least a factor of two lower if it was a plant-based milk um, in general. Excellent. Just checking if there's any other questions. Oh, here we go. Um, where are you getting the cereal and the latte? Yes. Right, good question about whether you, how you do how you cook the eggs. So yeah, so the cereal itself, you can see, um, at the, well, you might not be able to see very well, the cereal itself is this tiny blue bar at the bottom here. So it doesn't make a big difference um, about the cereal. It's mostly coming from the milk here. Um, and then the latte, yes, different people will make latte with different amounts of milk. And so depending on the outlet, then it might be mostly water or it might be entirely milk in which case that would have a big difference there. And in terms of the eggs, um, you can see maybe this tiny purple line here, which is showing the cooking of the eggs. And I've assumed that they're being boiled um, on, a, on, a, um, on an electric stove. Um, so that's, if you were using renewable energy instead, then you could remove that purple bar, but you could see the eggs are really the main contribution there. And that mostly comes from feeding the chickens so where does that food come from that feeds the chickens? So, you know, maybe you're, you have chickens or some people have chickens that are in their back garden eating insects. And that would be very low greenhouse gas emissions. But if people are buying animal feed you know, from the shop to feed to the chickens, that will contain soy, um, most likely. And the soy um, is coming often from areas which are being deforested to produce more animal feed to feed animals like chickens. So it really depends on the animal feed for the chickens and the eggs. So yeah, it doesn't make a lot, a lot of difference if the cereal is imported or produced locally. This does include transportation, but it's a very small fraction of the whole thing. It's much more about what, you know, basically the amount of milk. Good questions. I'm liking the questions. Just want to check because I could spend, I could speak all day about these things, but what time should I stop? <laughs> we plan this event till uh, 4 30 p.m. But yeah, that's fine. Work. No, no, no. I will be sure to stop by then. I will share the slides so that you can look at the slides if you want to. So, yeah, that's helpful. Brilliant. I'll save time for questions. So you already saw um, that, you know, you can re massively reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of your drink if you use different amounts of milk, but also um, you might want to make sure you boil less water. But actually, if you use a small amount of milk, it's not really a big thing. So that's a bit of context. OK, right. This is a difficult question. Um, which causes the most climate change? Um, the chicken sandwich, a cheese sandwich or the peanut butter and jam sandwich. So um, do you want to put your answers in the chat again? That would be very helpful and do ask questions. It's a difficult one, this one. Got a couple of votes coming in for cheese at the moment, peanut butter and jam. Excellent. 
And again, this is really to, to stimulate your questions. It's not a test. I'm not going to go and tell everybody what you said. So <laughs> feel free to say what you like. Great. It's unusual, actually. Most people go for the chicken. So this is interesting. Got quite a few votes for the peanut butter and jam. In fact, there's probably equal amount of votes for cheese and peanut butter and jam. Oh, got lots here. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. Brilliant. This is great. I'm going to go home. Oh, I'm at home. <laughs> this is great. Everyone should read this amazing answer. Thank you very much uh, for this. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. OK, everyone should read the answer in the chat. Um, I can see we've got so that, that explains why you've not voted for the chicken. Um, and I'll just show you the answers um, for the average values. So, yes, so the cheese and chicken are fairly similar, but absolutely, as you've written in the chat, it's really coming from the um, cows again that are producing the milk. So it takes 10 kilograms of milk to produce one kilogram of cheese. And we talked a bit already about, about cows. And we did talk about chickens, didn't we? And the, the it's really the feed that we're giving to the chickens, which is causing the, the climate impacts. And then uh, people are often quite surprised about the peanut butter. Um, so I suppose I'm curious your thoughts on the peanut butter. So when I give this talk in the UK, then people in the UK are very aware that we do not grow peanuts in the UK. And there's a lot of talk about transportation of food, food miles, and the climate impacts of that. So in the UK, people pick peanut butter because they're concerned about the transportation of the peanuts, but that is included in this number here. Um, and it's very, very small. So it's really more about um, producing food to feed to the chickens and the methane from the, the cows, um, uh, mostly methane from the cows. So also I should tell you that I did try this experiment of making a cheese uh, chicken sandwich and peanut butter sandwich. There's 50 grams of chicken in this calculation, 50 grams of cheese in the calculation. But if you try to eat a sandwich containing 50 grams of peanut butter, you will find that it's quite a lot of peanut butter. <laughs> it doesn't taste good. So I only put 20 grams of peanut butter into this calculation. So that was a bit of a cheat. So it would have been higher um, with that without that. But honestly, you wouldn't enjoy the sandwich. Good. OK. So and on the other hand, if we'd had a steak, sandwich instead that would have caused more greenhouse gas emissions with 50 grams of steak compared to 50 grams of cheese. Excellent okay we're going to do I think two more of these quiz questions okay so which do you think causes the most climate change um, a 25 gram small regular small bar of chocolate a packet of crisps a banana or an apple and um, so again, answers in the chat, please. Okay, great answers are coming in. Excellent, crispy banana. <laughs> uh, there's people feeling upset about the chocolate there. Okay, so what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six votes for chocolate. One, two votes for crisp. Three votes for crisps. Banana is is um, also coming up. Brilliant. So there's a bit of um, uh, a variation there. Okay, shall I reveal now? Okay, so the most important thing is that all of these numbers are very small. We can hardly see the details here. They're very small compared with our budget for the day. So this is great because I love all of these things. Um, but also um, the chocolate is the highest. You can see that's partly because of the milk in the chocolate, um, but also partly um, the processing sugar and the cocoa. Um, and you could also see um, the banana, that, that calculation does include 
the, the shipping of the banana from, for example, um, South America to the UK or, you know, 20,000 kilometers across the world, basically. But actually shipping is not so bad. Um, and so there's a fantastic book um, called How Bad Are Bananas? Um, which is a very good book. I recommend that. Um, it probably, well, you maybe know it already. Um, and I don't want to spoil the book for you, but the answer is that bananas are not that bad. Um, and so I'm very really happy about that. And also the crisps are not that bad as well. So that's that's good. Excellent. But they're all quite small. OK, next slide. Here we go. OK. Right. Which do you think causes the most? This is the last, last poll question. Which do you think causes oops, the most climate change? The chicken tikka masala and rice, so that's basically a chicken with sauce. It could be any sauce, really, um, a slightly creamy sauce, maybe. Um, chicken uh, with creamy sauce and rice, apple pie and a small amount of cream in this calculation, um, or a bottle of beer. So which do you think causes the most climate change? I guess I can just in the chat. And do ask the questions again. Okay, we've got some votes coming in. Great. Okay. Apple pie cream, beer, chicken. Excellent. Good. Oh, another one for the apple pie and cream. That's interesting. Yeah, this is very interesting because I've done this this question with a lot of people, and and it's it's uh, you guys are, are quite heavy on the apple pie and cream uh, compared to other audiences, which is really interesting. Oh, lots of votes coming in while I'm talking there. I'm just dreaming about apple pie and cream. Okay, got some more for beer and the the chicken uh, coming in there. Okay, loads for the pie and cream. Okay, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review. Oh, the rice, interesting, interesting about the rice. Okay, we can talk about rice if you like. Okay, so here's the, here's the results for, for again, for average values. Um, so you can see that the chicken um, curry and rice is, is a large, is the largest. It's also quite large compared to our total for the day. We've used up, you know, most of our budget already on that chicken curry and rice. The apple pie and cream, I've just used a very small amount of cream. This is one tablespoon of cream. But if you had a lot of cream, then of course you could, and I think this picture has quite a lot. I think that's custard actually, not cream. So that makes it look worse than I've done in the calculation. Um, and putting the oven on is actually the biggest uh, contribution out of all of these. So the cooking is also important. Um, the beer is fine. A lot of people very happy about the beer being fine. Um, and people worry a lot about the packaging for drinks. And that, that is reasonable. But of course, we also have to think about the way we produce the, the contents of the packaging, um, which is the bigger of the two here. So this is really dominated by the chicken and the, the cream um, in the sauce. And then rice itself is also um, on average, um, higher greenhouse gas emissions because of the paddy fields, which release methane because of the um, decomposition um, underwater of, of, of plants. Um, so this is also quite an interesting topic, but it's still really mostly the, 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 the animal products which are important. Excellent. So we could compare different uh, meals. So if we had a spaghetti bolognese instead, so we had, um, we had about 125 grams of, of beef um, in that. And if, if it was um, from a beef herd um, of cows, then that would be really much, much bigger. Um, or we could have maybe um, fish and chips where we've got the, the, the fish there um, coming in very similar to the chicken um, and rice. But all of these are much bigger well, than, than, than the other things I've shown you. And they're the really maybe starting looking at dinner is the best thing to do uh, if you're thinking about how can you reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of, of diets and um, you can see that this is probably the most impactful meal of the day but if we were to maybe switch out from from beef to chicken in that spaghetti bolognese we would reduce the greenhouse gas emissions quite a lot and if we were to switch to um, using say lentils or other pulses then we would um, have a, a you know 
we'd have some space in our daily budget for some breakfast and lunch to go here as well, um, which would be nice. And this calculation assumes that all of these things are coming in tin cans. So in the, you know, very easy to prepare, but of course you could also um, cook these things um, from scratch without the cans, which, which can be lower. Um, and if we were to have different types of curry uh, or different types of um, meat and sauce, then if we had a lamb um, curry instead of a chicken curry, then that would again be much bigger than our daily budget that we've got here. If we were to switch to a, a type of pulse like chickpeas, then we could have, a, again, have lots of space here for other food for our lunch and um, maybe even apple pie uh, afterwards as well. Excellent. So you can can find all this in the book, lots more calculations like this. And it's I'm particularly happy that it's actually free um, as an ebook. So um, this is thanks to funding from the University of Manchester that you can get it for free um, from from uh, from lots of places. Um, I'm just going to share very briefly um, some resources that we've put online on this website here. Um, put that into the chat. Um, so that you can download these and play with these things and maybe if you're interested to use them in your um, your work then you're very welcome we'd love to hear if you've done that as well any photos we like photos and tweets and uh, other social media platforms as well um, so this is just some examples so we've got a game here um, which uh, you can also play um, yourselves which is slightly addictive so apologies I have heard of whole offices you know starting to play this for the afternoon instead of doing work so um I don't want to distract you too much um but this game here um you can uh it basically asks you to click on the lowest greenhouse gas emissions food and then the next lowest and then the next lowest and it's carefully done to become more difficult as you go ahead and if you get something wrong then it will ask you the same question again so we find this useful, we, we enjoy playing it ourselves, but also we find it a very good way of getting children engaged. Um, if you give children an iPad um, or a screen with this on, they just start playing it before, you know, they've, they've really thought about whether they're interested in this topic. So it's a useful way to get people engaged. And then maybe they ask questions later on, um, which is great. Um, and then another thing that we use is these flashcards, which again are free on our website um, to download and print out um, if the, the copyright is there. So this is um, all available um, for anybody to try. And so this is uh, showing you the greenhouse gas emissions um, in the same units that we've been talking about. But it's also showing you the greenhouse gas emissions in, in comparing to driving a car. So having this, 100 grams of steak, so a sort of smaller portion of steak, causes the same amount of greenhouse gas emissions as driving a car for about, about 30 minutes, about half an hour, 29 minutes. So this is another way of thinking about it, um, which I find useful with children who are maybe familiar with car journeys and asking how long is the car journey going to be. And so we can see a big difference between the steak and, for example, a, a veggie sausage here, which is two minutes of driving a, a car. And so the one of the things that I do um, is I give people maybe three cards each. And then um, I don't know if you're familiar with the game Top Trumps, but um, people can play, for example, Top Trumps uh, with these cards or you can do a game getting people to guess which is higher or lower out of different foods. So it's another way of getting people engaged and asking questions. Um, and you can, you can download, download all of that. You can click through and get all of the detailed numbers and the references and all of these things are all available. This is just from the you know latest academic literature on this topic. Um, and this has also been translated into several languages um, and also adapted for local food types. Um, so this is um, something that um, we've done in, um, in, in particular region in India, also um, in Brazil, um, also in Wales. So this is um, another, another thing that um, is quite fun. Um, and we've also put some resources that we made during lockdown um, a couple of years ago, three years ago. Um, where we've got lots of worksheets. So this is aimed at uh, children 
Um, so asking them to do calculations um, and then um, work out the total greenhouse gas emissions of different activities. So this is an example that somebody um, submitted. There's, there's videos showing somebody doing the activity to make it easier. Um, this is all um, uh, written and with um, uh, drawing. So there's no speaking um, in this video, um, which makes it slightly um, more accessible to different languages as well. Um, and, you know, uh, calculations about um, transportation and climate change. So this person here has looked at air freighting, bringing strawberries by air. In the winter, for example, in the UK, we have strawberries that come on an aeroplane. Um, comparing that to if it comes by lorry or by uh, bananas coming from boat and doing those calculations. And then activities with the flashcards. So for example, choosing different lunch items and adding up the, the answers um, and uh, lots of things you could do with that. So we really um, love to hear your thoughts on, you know, um, on all of that. And I shall stop talking now and really interested to hear any questions. Thank you very much indeed.